My name is Luke Wiseman. I'm here today with Lisa Rhino at the Scripps Research Institute, and we are two of the authors on the Cell Reports manuscript titled Stress Independent Activation of XBP1 Spliced and or ATF6 Reveals Three Functionally Diverse Endoplasmic Reticulum Proteostasis Environments. The first author on this manuscript, Matt Shoulders, is unfortunately unable to be with us today as he has begun his independent career at MIT. In this manuscript, we address how activation of the unfolded protein response alters the composition and activity of endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, protein homeostasis environment. The unfolded protein response, or UPR, is a stress response to ceiling pathway that alters ER protein homeostasis in response to pathologic insults that induce ER stress. The UPR consists of three integrated ceiling pathways induced downstream of the ER localized transmembrane proteins, PERC, IRV1, and ATF6. Activation of the UPR results in both translational attenuation of new protein synthesis downstream of the PERC pathway, as well as the activation of stress-responsive transcription factors such as XPP1 spliced downstream of IRV1 and a cleaved product of ATF6 downstream of full-length ATF6. These transcription factors remodel ER protein folding environment through the upregulation of ER chaperones, folding factors, as well as components of ER-associated degradation pathway that alter ER protein folding capacity and prevent the accumulation of misfolded proteins within the ER lumen. Now, traditionally, the UPR has been studied to elucidate the signaling pathways involved in activation of the UPR, but we wanted to ask a slightly different question. We want to address how activating the stress-responsive transcription factors, XPP1 spliced and or ATF6, as part of the UPR, influences the composition and activity of ER localized protein folding, trafficking, and degradation pathways. Now, to do this, we need a methodology that allows us to activate XPP1 spliced or ATF6 in the same cell completely independent of stress. Now, we and others have found that tetracycline-inducible XPP1 splice activation allows for activation of the XPP1 transcriptional program at physiologically relevant levels, or levels consistent with what we see when we induce the global UPR activation with ER stress. So we needed an alternative approach to activate the ATF6 transcriptional program. So in order to activate the ATF6 transcriptional program at physiologically relevant levels and selectively, we used previously established destabilized domain protein technology. Um, whereby we fused a destabilized domain protein, dihydrofolate reductase, or DHFR, internally to our ATF6 transcription factor. Um, and, and in the unfolded state, this protein, uh, fusion protein, is rapidly degraded by the proteasome. However, if a small molecule pharmacologic chaperone, trimethoprim, or TMP, is added, it shifts the equilibrium from the unfolded DHFR to the folded DHFR state and allows for activation and stabilization of this uh, DHFR ATF6 fusion protein. And there are several different uh, advantages that we have found using this method. Um, so we were able to see dosable activation of ATF6 with increasing concentrations of tri trimethoprim. Also, we were able to see specific activation of ATF6 targets um, at the, both the transcriptomic and proteomic level. Also, we were able to rapidly activate our um, ATF6 uh, downstream transcriptional targets um, via this post-translational uh, methodology. Also, we can easily transport this, this methodology into many different cell lines, uh, including primary fibroblasts. So using this approach, we prepared a stable cell line expressing both tetracycline-inducible XPP1 spliced and DHFR ATF6. Now in these cells, we can orthogonally activate the XPP1 or ATF6 transcriptional programs by the addition of the tetracycline analog doxycycline, which activates XPP1 spliced, or trimethoprim, which activates the DHFR ATF6. Alternatively, we can activate both transcription factors in the same cells by the addition of both drugs. Now, using these cells, we characterize in molecular detail the impact of activating XPP1 spliced and or ATF6 on the composition of endoplasmic reticulum proteostasis pathways using both transcriptional microarray analysis and whole cell proteomics. Now, through this approach, we identify three distinct ER proteostasis environments that can be accessed by the independent or combined activation of these two transcription factors. Furthermore, we go on to demonstrate that accessing these different ER proteostasis environments allows us to differentially influence the folding, trafficking, or degradation of destabilized mutant proteins targeted to the ER lumen. Ultimately, our results provide in molecular detail the impact of activating these transcription factors on ER protein homeostasis and demonstrate the potential for accessing these different environments to influence the aberrant ER protein homeostasis involved in the pathology of numerous human protein misfolding diseases.